suck somebody out of the cabin and fling them over the balcony railing. You know, I have a really active imagination, but it does have its limits. It is Sunday, February 7th, 2021, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about yet another MSC Grandiosa cabin. Welcome everybody, here we are again. It feels good to be here. I hope you're feeling good. This is the second time I've started making this video. The first time I totally freaked out, the cat did too, because somebody in this apartment right here, I think they were hanging up pictures or something and they started drilling in the wall and it was unbelievably loud. I'm hoping they're done now. We'll see. You've clicked on the title of the video. You are here because you want to see an inside cabin on the MSC Grandiosa. And as always in these Sunday Sofa Time videos, I'm probably going to end up talking about a whole bunch of other stuff first. So if you just want to see inside the cabin, go to this time in the video or you can scroll your mouse over that red line underneath and it will tell you exactly when I start. And before we get to that, I want to tell you how it came to be that I got to tour four cabins on the ship. If you've been watching the daily vlogs, then you know most of this information, but I thought I would just put it all down in one video. So when I was booking this cruise on the Grandioso, which happened in last October and by the way, here comes the first tangent. MSC is still cruising right now. And even though non-essential travel is highly frowned upon at the moment, it's not actually forbidden. And I don't know, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. The prices are so good and the ships are basically empty. The thing that makes it really tricky is the flights are so expensive. So I might, you know, get a balcony cabin on, on the same route on the same ship that I was just on for like 600 euros, but then the flight will be like 1500 euros. So if I can find a better solution for that, I might be cruising again before the end of March. What do you think? Even if it was the Grandiosa again and the same route, should I do it? Okay, back to business. When I was booking the Grandiosa cruise, which happened last October, I was looking at ways to just, you know, mix it up a little bit. And so I thought about uh, getting an aft cabin, which is at the very back of the ship, looking like backwards. I know most of you know what aft cabin means, but there might be someone out there. And usually those kind of cabins are sort of in a different category. They're, you know, because they're kind of special. So they're usually priced differently and called a little bit different. But I, you know, went through the, the booking process and clicked on a standard balcony cabin. And then you get like a selection of cabins you can choose from. And I was surprised to see, okay, yeah, there, there are aft balcony cabins available and so I'm gonna take one. And I know most of you watching this now know what happened. I, I booked it, I got to the ship, I went into the cabin and it ended up being this really small cabin with just a couch that was like transformed into bunk beds and nothing else, no other bed, no other place to, to sit, you know, no like chair or anything like that, sofa. It was like just a cabin for a couch. And I was not happy with that. And so I ended up moving into a standard balcony cabin later that night. So that's how I got to tour this like mini cabin and then a normal balcony cabin. I also already showed you here on the channel, the MSC Yacht Club uh, balcony suite, I think is what it's called or deluxe balcony suite, whether or not it's like deluxe you be the judge. And the way I got to tour that cabin is because uh, another YouTuber that I know who literally lives right over there, right around the corner from me, his name is Matthias Moore or the Shifts Tester. He uh, has a really, really big su successful YouTube channel here in the German market about cruises. And uh, we get together and talk every now and then and do a lot of, you know, writing to each other. Anyways, he was on the same cruise. He got upgraded to the Yacht Club and and that's how I ended up getting to tour also a yacht club cabin. So those are the three cabins and I wasn't expecting uh, to get to look at any other cabin on the ship. And then on the very last day, literally the very last day, I got to tour an inside cabin and it's because in the main dining room where I ended up eating quite often actually, yes, it's me, Morgan, 
I'm healthy. I really said that. I ate in the main dining room often. It was 2020, you know, strange things were happening. The tables were spaced apart and so next to me was an empty table and then on the next table was an Italian couple and then on this side was an empty table and then the next table was two guys and they were totally gay. <laughs> it sounds so funny when I say that, doesn't it? But so the guys next to me on this side were a couple and one of them was German and one of them was uh, British and you know I was sitting there alone and they had seen me you know like videoing my food every night night and I think we had done a little bit of small talk I don't know but then on the second to last night we got into a conversation and then we ended up going and uh, hanging out in the casino a little bit together and then the next day we decided we would meet for lunch in the main dining room and by the way I haven't showed you that food yet I ordered three entrees and then I also videoed their food as well so that's going to be coming up probably in next week's Sunday Sofa Time. And as always we got into talking about you know who we are, where we're from, what we do and I told him about what I'm doing on the ship and what I do you know here on YouTube and it's actually their cabin that we're gonna look at here in a minute. And the weird thing is and this is something I still don't completely understand and I haven't talked to them since then uh, so I'm not gonna like get in touch with them to try to clear it up again because they did try to explain it to me then and I don't know, it's not that I don't understand it, it's more like I kinda don't believe it. So these dudes are like huge cruising fans and they had mostly cruised, I think it was with NCL. If, if you follow me on Facebook and have seen uh, other videos, these are the, the guys who have done I think 20 or maybe it was 50 NCL cruises and they're like my age so they've been going for it. And this had been the second time within a month that they had been on the Grandiosa and they were going to be going home for a week and then getting right back on. So these are like cruise maniacs. And they were telling me that they had a balcony cabin and an inside cabin booked on this cruise and the reason they did it that way is because that was cheaper than booking a balcony cabin together. So do you see why this makes no sense? They explained to me that when they were going through the booking process they looked at what it was going to cost for both of them to, to book a balcony cabin together and then they looked at what it would cost if they booked separately and for some reason booking separately so two solo traveler cabins was cheaper and so they did it that way and then they ended up just staying in the balcony cabin and they literally never even touched or went into the other cabin for any real reason. Weird. So it's actually their cabin, this completely untouched inside cabin that I got to tour and the weird thing was, like I said, we uh, we were having dinner next to each other every night or every night that I went to the main dining room and then it turned out that they were staying right next to me and I didn't even know it and their cabin was literally the cabin that was outside my cabin. Weird. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the cabin, but before we do that, surprise! I'm gonna put a little commercial break right here. If you got one, let me know what it was about in the comments below. Okay, I've got the videos over here on my laptop and I'm going to be going through it and you're gonna see what I'm talking about as I go through it. And to be honest, I haven't watched these clips since I videoed them. I mean, there's not gonna be any like huge surprises there, but this is kind of like me going through it for the first time. That's what I'm saying. All right, so you can see from the colors and from the artwork here that this looks very similar to the balcony cabin that I had. And from the way the headboard there is, I'm wondering if they can split that bed or if it's just one big bed. It kind of looks like there might be a dent in the middle, so you probably can get those beds split apart. And I have seen balcony cabins that, or I mean inside cabins that were maybe a little bit broader than this. I wanna say that the inside cabin I had on the Harmony of the Seas, which is the last time I stayed in an inside cabin maybe. I can think of two instances in the recent years where I've stayed in inside cabins. One was on the uh, NCL Jade after the refit and the other one was on the Harmony of the Seas. And the Jade cabin was probably about this size and it's a much older ship. And the Harmony, I wanna say is bigger than this. But I also have a clip here from the other direction. So let's take a look here. You know, 
from this side, it's kind of weird. There, it actually doesn't look that small from this direction because it's quite a ways to the door, and then there's a, you know, a little, there's a little alcove there next to the closet, and uh, the, you got a desk there and a place to sit. The television is kind of like back there in the alcove though, so that's kind of weird, and. There's Zoe, the virtual assistant that just tells you to turn on the television. The next clip I have here, okay, this is more the desk and the refrigerator and the closet area. I kind of like this layout. This is definitely bigger than the Jade. And I want to say it's probably the same size as Harmony of the Seas. It's just laid out differently. And then of course on the Harmony, I had that really cool virtual balcony, so but I'm sure that this was less expensive. And let's look at the bathroom here. So Morgan approved bathroom, which is nice. Also a shower uh, cabin with a glass door. Uh, you know, this is, this is exactly the same bathroom layout as I had in my balcony cabin. So there's nothing more, nothing less there. Same thing, probably the brightest part of the cabin to tell you the truth. And that is one thing that I'm noticing here in my balcony cabin. I felt like because of the colors and the design, I think it especially, it especially had to do with the dark carpet, that it seemed kind of dark even when the sun was out. And I'm sure that these inside cabins, of course, there is no natural light, um, but I'm sure that these inside cabins seem even darker. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nicely appointed, very clean lines. Uh, one thing that I'm missing here that I know I've seen in most other inside cabins, I think I've only stayed in three inside cabins to tell you the truth now, um, is usually one part of some wall is a big mirror and that adds a little bit of depth to the room and I, I didn't see that in these videos, but what do you guys think? You know, one huge advantage of inside cabins is if you're on a really small budget, these can be very inexpensive and then you're on the ship. And honestly, like people say all the time, you know, how much time are you really spending in your cabin? And one, there is, however, one reason why at the moment I would be very hesitant to book an inside cabin. And that's because if there is some kind of outbreak, uh, 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 I hate that word, but if there's like, you know, some kind of medical situation on the ship and then you end up having to quarantine on the ship and then stay longer. In that case, there are so many more advantages about having a balcony cabin then than an inside cabin. Imagine if you end up having to stay in the cabin for two weeks. That is not going to be cute. That's why at the moment I would really, really much prefer a balcony cabin to an inside cabin because of that. And there we go. I have no more cabins to show you now on the Grandiosa. It was only four. I hope that's enough. I don't think I've ever shown that many cabins on the same cruise ship. On the, I've been on the Epic twice, but I basically stayed in the same cabin twice. So yeah, I mean, it was a cool experience. And maybe if I do cruise on the Grandiosa next month, maybe I'll try to get into some other kind of cabin. Maybe I will end up taking an aft balcony cabin, but of course, not the same one. And I will do a much better job of reading the fine print this time. And that's gonna be it for the cabin talk, but now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, I took you around that mini cabin with the transformer couch in it, and these comments are on that, well, two of these comments are on that video, and one of them is from a different video, but I just had to share it with you. The first comment is from April Hyland. April writes, yes, I agree. The wording on the cabin needs to be changed. There's no way a third or fourth person can even stay in that room. Totally. The, the wording is very misleading and some people say it should have been obvious. I mean, it should have been obvious to me and it was my fault that I ended up in that cabin, but I'm happy that most of you, when you look at the information, say that you would have made the same mistake and that it is misleading. That makes me feel better about it. So thank you, April. Next comment is from a name, I don't think it's meant to be pronounced here, Dr. Kernja. 
Durkinja, you. Agree with you 100%. Carnival has a special oddball class cabin 1A where you'll find bunk beds or even the 4J French door cabins located behind the lifeboats. Still get fresh air but no view so sold as highest priced interior. And I have to say that's the right way to do it. To communicate, listen, this is a special cabin and the pricing is a little bit different. That's how this cabin should have been on MSC as well. Royal Caribbean has their similar situation family suite cabins on Anthem in three different colors, including a studio. No commercial, that's too bad for me. I like both the live and recorded Sunday sofa time, but when not part of the live stream, I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe the first or last Sunday of the month can be a Sunday sofa time live. Yeah. I need to do another live one coming up soon, not only because it, you know, makes sense then that I'm paying for this monthly subscription to the streaming program, but also I miss it. So maybe next Sunday we'll be live. I haven't decided yet. Okay, to wrap it up here, I'm gonna do something a little different and I'm gonna read a comment on a much older video that popped up here. The video is my man falls off cruise ship video, which is sort of a comedic look at how often people actually fall off of cruise ships. It's one of the most popular videos on my channel and I'm very happy for that. And this comment showed up there six days ago. It's from somebody called my friend or the shepherd. Are you ready for this? So this person writes, I almost fell over our balcony when I was standing just inside our stateroom and my husband opened the stateroom door to go into the hallway. As he opened the door, there was like a suction draft of wind from both the balcony door and stateroom door being opened. As he opened the stateroom door wider, it sucked me out of our room onto our balcony and I hit the balcony railing and I flipped over and almost fell off. I clung to the balcony for dear life, pulling myself back up and over. This is a true story, and anyone who has sailed with a stateroom that has a balcony knows about this suction between the two doors. I won't have a stateroom with a balcony ever again. What do you all think about that? I do know the suction that this person is talking about. Uh, I, I do know that depending on the difference in temperature inside the ship and outside the ship, that sometimes when you open your cabin door. If you have the balcony door open, there is a strong wind. I, I do know about that. Whether or not it's strong enough to suck somebody out of the cabin and fling them over the balcony railing. You know, I have a really active imagination, but it does have its limits. I'd be really curious to hear what you have to say about that in the comments below. If it did happen, it sounds terrifying, but I'm not so sure. Thank you for spending this part of your weekend with me, whether you watch this right away Sunday morning or some other time of the week. I'm glad you're here no matter what time it is. And I look forward to seeing you here again soon. Have a good one.